Most people here uh, know John Blum. John acquired a telescope from his children as a retirement gift in 2001, and after that, began acquiring club memberships. He belongs to uh, eight astronomy clubs in Michigan and Hawaii. Uh, John joins the clubs mainly for the socialization aspect, and he's a good promoter of, uh, of amateurs joining clubs and uh, what to do when you get there. He'll help you out. So I'll let you talk uh, from here. Thanks, Rob. That's it. Uh, Ken didn't mention, but on the uh, Juno mission are three Legos. And I know about this because uh, I have a grandson who's very into Legos. So there is a Lego figurine of Galileo, of Jupiter, the god Jupiter, and of the, his wife, Juno. Uh, you've probably seen pictures of this uh, building and may have even wondered where it was. And I was always intrigued by pictures I saw of this beautiful building with the planets and a big sun inside of it. So, I finally, after years, eventually got to see this. This is the Rose Center for Earth and Space. Uh, it takes uh, getting on an airplane to get there, and this can sometimes be a challenge. But I love New York, and so I thought it was worth going to see that. Uh, the Rose Center for Earth and Space is in the American Museum of Natural History. That's in Central Park West and 79th Street. I'm having a little trouble with giving this slide to show on my own screen so I can see it. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, so where have you heard of the American Museum of Natural History? It's the setting for the movie Night at the Museum with Ben Stiller. So if you've seen that movie, you'll be intrigued just walking around the museum and seeing the places that you saw in that movie. The Rose Center includes the Hayden Planetarium, a previous version of which was at this museum from 1935 to 1997. Interestingly, in the right-hand picture, you'll notice in that old version of the Hayden Planetarium that the stars are on the wall, not the ceiling, and the people are sitting in folding chairs. You'll see in a future picture that there's been some improvements since that time. The Hayden Planetarium is named after Charles Hayden, 1870 to 1937, a banker who made his fortune by owning copper mines because he foresaw the need for copper for wires as the country was becoming electrified. He was a philanthropist who in 1934 donated $150,000 to New York's <coughs> American Museum of Natural History so that it could build a planetarium, which he named after him, and hence we have the name Hayden Planetarium. The current version of the Hayden Planetarium and the Rose Center for Earth and Space opened in 2000. You can see in this contrasting picture that we finally got the stars up on the ceiling where they belong and the people are sitting in permanent chairs, no longer in folding chairs. The director of the Rose Center since its opening in 2000 is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Dr. Tyson is a 57-year-old astrophysicist born in New York City. He says he first became interested in astronomy when he visited the Hayden Planetarium when he was nine years old. He joined the Hayden Planetarium as a staff scientist in 1994 and became its director in 1996. He hosted the remake of Carl Sagan's Cosmos TV series in 2014. Pluto was not happy when Tyson removed Pluto's planet status from the Rose Center exhibits. Tyson said, you're not a planet, and Pluto said, and you're not Carl Sagan. A docent I met at the Rose Center told me that she's worked there for three years but never met Dr. Tyson. I got to meet him in 2013 when he spoke at Grand Valley State University, just outside of Grand Rapids. You'll notice I'm wearing a WASP sweatshirt, and amazingly, he actually noticed the WASP logo on the sweatshirt and asked me about the club. So I got 30 seconds to tell him about the Warren Astronomical Society. The Rose Center is named for Frederick Phineas Rose and Sandra Priest Rose, husband and wife real estate developers and philanthropists, who donated $20 million of the $150 million that it cost to build it. Notice that it cost 1,000 times as much to get the Rose Center built in 2000 as it cost Charles Hayden to get the planetarium built in 1934, $150 million compared to $150,000. Here's me standing in front of the Rose Center, which I got to visit in 2015, just last year. I'm standing on a terrace outside the building, which has some water shooting up in the pretty fountains so the kids can run and play in the water fountains. The Rose Center is a glass box, 95 feet tall, on a concrete base 
25 feet tall, with an 87-foot diameter sphere in the center that represents the sun. Remember the 87-foot diameter size of the Hayden sphere because we'll be talking about other things in relation to its size. The sphere is about the height of a nine-story building. The 429-feet Hayden Planetarium is inside the top half of the 87-foot sphere. It has a Zeiss Mark 9 star projector plus high-resolution full-dome digital video. The planetarium here at Cranbrook has 75 seats just for comparison to the 429 seats you have here in this planetarium inside the sphere. The bottom half of the sphere contains the Big Bang Theater, which shows the birth of the universe in a four-minute program. <coughs> Proportionally sized planets surround the sphere as the sphere represents the sun. A 360-foot-long spiral cosmic pathway winds around the lower half of the sphere and has a timeline with information and pictures of the history of the universe. We have two different pathways around the sphere, this one about time and another one about size, which we'll talk about in a moment. This timeline that you can walk on varies with the size of your stride, but roughly each step you take on this pathway is about 100 million years. I don't know why the timeline says 13 billion years when the age of the universe is 14 billion years, but they have a timeline divided up to 13 billion. As you walk along the pathway, you see exhibits about what formed at each time. Here's the formation of the solar system at about 9 billion years after the Big Bang. Major developmental stages represented on the pathway include the formation of the Milky Way, formation of the Sun and the Earth, the first life on Earth, the production of oxygen in the oceans, and the age of the dinosaurs. Artifacts along the pathway include a meteorite that dates from the birth of the solar system, a sample of the oldest rock formation on Earth, a trilobite, and the fossilized serrated tooth of a carnivorous dinosaur, each one placed in the proper position for its timeline as you walk around this sphere. The past 30,000 years of human history span the width of a single hair in proportion to the size of this timeline. And this is what you come to at the end of the walk around the time pathway. As shown in the lower left corner of this picture, there's a separate scales of the universe, 400, work walk, 400 foot walkway, around the perimeter of the inside of the building. It has exhibits about relative sizes instead of about time. Here are some examples of relative sizes, all compared to the Hayden sphere. If the Hayden sphere is the size of our observable universe, then the oval crystal above the blue display in this picture is the size of the Virgo supercluster of galaxies. If the Hayden sphere is the size of the Milky Way, then the globular cluster M80 is the size of the clear crystal ball above this blue display. M80 is a globular Scorpius, about 33 light years away and 95 light years in diameter. If the Hayden sphere is the size of M80, then the above clear crystal ball is the size of the Oort cloud. If the Hayden sphere were the size of the star Rigel in Orion, then the white ball shown here would be the size of the sun. If the 87 foot Hayden sphere is the sun, then the Earth is a nine and a half inch ball, and Jupiter is nine feet in diameter. Here are the balls representing the sizes of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars relative to the height of size of the Hayden sphere being the sun. We also got down to smaller sizes. If the Hayden sphere is the size of a meteor crater in Arizona, then this white ball is the size of the Hayden sphere. <laughs> if the Hayden sphere is its own actual size, then this model of the human brain is its own actual size. <laughs> if the Hayden sphere is the size of a raindrop, this white circle is the size of a red blood cell. If the Hayden sphere is the size of a hydrogen atom, then the illustration shows the size of a proton. It's just a little dot shown inside of the square in this orange picture. And I'm only showing you a handful of the samples of sizes. There's many other sizes that are really amazing as you walk around and see all the illustrations and really get a feel for the difference in sizes in the universe. <coughs> Below the sphere is the Hall of the Universe, which is a room whose four sides have exhibits about the planets, stars, galaxies, and the universe. 
For example, there are displays of explaining types and sizes of stars. This exhibit is the largest meteor I've ever really? seen. 15 tons. The Hall of Planet Earth connects the 16-year-old Rose Center with the 130-year-old American Museum of Natural History. Exhibits in this hall tell the history of our planet. The Hall of Meteorites contains exhibits about the origin of the solar system. Admission to the American Museum of Natural History includes admission to the Rose Center for Earth and Space. It costs $22, seniors and students $17. Or admission with a planetarium show is 27 hours, seniors and students 22. It's open from 10 a.m. to 5.45 p.m. I can't cover all there is to see at the Rose Center, much less all of the museum in this short presentation, but there's definitely enough to keep you busy all day long between the Rose Center and the American Museum of Natural History. The Rose Center should be on every amateur astronomer's bucket list. I did want to say that uh, admission is actually by donation, so their suggested donation is $22.17, but, but much like with us, it's kind of up to you. So. Thank you. Is there a, Mike. did you say what the scale was for the solar system there? Is there a scale number? The, the sun is the sphere in the center, and the solar system bodies are hanging around it. What scale? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. But if you decide to divide the 87 foot sphere into the uh, size of the sun, let me know what you have. Yeah. Well, Earth is nine and a half inches. The sun is about 865,000 miles in diameter. So 87 feet works very, very nicely in that. <laughs> so you can figure out what the sphere features are based on that. How hard is it to uh, find this place? It probably is oh, yeah. yeah, how hard is it to find this place? Really? Uh, you just get in your Uber car and tell me you want to go there. <laughs> you can get there from the subway. <laughs> there is no way there is a I used to uh, Uber a lot in Manhattan. I found it much more convenient taxis because it comes quicker, it's much cheaper, and you know when it's coming because you see it on your little app when it's coming. But the museum has its own subway stop. That's what Jonathan and I thought. Anything else? <clears throat> Excellent. He's right. It is a bucket list item for. Thank you, John. Thank you. John, did you get in the sphere? No, uh, the planetarium was closed for remodeling. And oh, actually, I was in the sphere because I was in the lower half of the sphere for the uh, Big Bang Theater. So the um, history of uh, explanation of the Big Bang is in the lower half. So I was in the lower half of the sphere. If the planetarium's open, you'll be in the upper half of the sphere. Thank you. Excellent. And we will now.